would be awesome. Okay, um, great, thank you. Um, so um, if you missed it before, if you would go ahead and let us know through QR code that you're here, it's a big help. Um, we've got things linked on 1220. This is the one of the first years we've been able to do a lot more with using 1220, not just register for events, but also to capture attendance. So thank you for doing that. So um, this is where we're heading today. Um, we are talking a little bit about companies and how you engage with companies in different ways and building company lists and putting a bit more strategy. We're going to get into that. Um, so it's a it's a topic I think is a fun one. Um, so we're going to talk about it, building employer lists and how you kind of explore different companies, talk about when a company is not hiring, what can you do if you're wanting to engage with them, but it's not working through the traditional uh, methods. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about um, interacting with an employer and, and how you can kind of stay in touch with them over time. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up with some next steps. So that is where we're headed today. And and if as questions come up, we'll head into those too. Um, I hope you've had a chance to interact with some of the team. Um, um, this is an awesome team. I'm really glad that I get to work with them. And we've got a number of, of them on the call. Um, so... Um, yeah, I, and I guess I should start. I'm I'm Brooke. If we haven't had a chance to meet, I work especially with I work a little bit with all of the specialized master's programs, but I work um, especially with uh, some of the the data science students. Um, and then Zeke, do you mind doing a quick intro? Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Zeke Artiaga. I just started last month as the new master of marketing coach, um, but I have been with Owen. I was on the MBA side, so Kathleen and I, and I kind of switched in some ways. Um, but really glad to be here and I'm um, sure hopefully some of my recruiting expertise with you all. Yes, I'm, I'm always excited to hear about Zeke's experiences with that. So that's, that's great. Um, and we also have some others from our office here as well. So very excited. Uh, Srinity, do you mind saying hello as well? Yeah. Hi, my name is Srinity. Um, I am one of the graduate assistants in this office. Um, I'm going to be entering my second year in my grad program over at Peabody and my second year with the CMC. So it's nice to meet you all. I'll say if you're a, a data science student um, and if you have not had a chance to talk with Serenity, I strongly encourage you to do so. We'll talk more about that uh, towards the end with next steps, but um, she's a great resource and has worked with um, the data science students uh, last year and brings a lot of great experience from that to this year as well. And then we've got uh, Byung-ho with us as well. Hi everybody, my name is Byung Ho. Um, I'm currently in Chicago right now uh, on vacation, but um, yeah, I'm really excited to work with you guys. I led last week's session on networking, so for those of you that attended this really great build up, I'm currently in the master plan over at Peabody doing higher education, um, and I primarily work with the master finance students. Awesome. Yes, as Bianca mentioned, he's coming back with us. We are very excited this year that we've got two folks that are returning on the graduate assistant, graduate intern side. Um, so they're great resources. Um, please put them to use MSFs. If you don't know Bianco, he's a great person to be in touch with. Um, and Bianco, thanks for joining us too on a, on a vacation. Um, I hope you get to do some actual vacationing on your, your vacation as well. So, um, one other person on the team that I'll give a quick shout out to who's not with us is Jenny. She is um, currently outside the U.S. and hopefully she is actually doing vacation, although she's been responding to more more emails than 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 I would hope. Um, but she's another great contact, especially for those in the MSF program. So some of you have been with us um, and that's awesome. Thank you for those of us, who, uh, those of you who've been been with us through some of the past sessions. We started out the summer sessions in the beginning of June, and the first session we did was around career exploration, like thinking about what are the different career possibilities of what you could do um, with the, the different programs that you are heading into. What have people done from those programs in the past? Um, the next session we did was on bridging skill gaps. So the first session was kind of this blank slate of like, hey, what do you think you want to do? What's out there? What options are there? And then we kind of brought it in for a dose of reality in the second session being like, well, wait a minute, what do employers think? Like what actually, what do you have that can help prepare you or make you successful in the in the past that you are taking? Um, you know, and, and what can you do to bridge the gaps that you might have to get to those places? 
Um, then Trinity led a session on telling your story, um, which is so important. I think it's one of the most important parts of interviewing. It's a key part of networking, knowing your story, and then thinking about you know how that fits into your plan. Where are you going to go in your in your job and internship search? Um, before um, no. A couple of weeks back, we did resumes and uh, LinkedIn sessions, kind of thinking about how you can improve your resume. You can work on your LinkedIn profile. Last time, Byung-ho led us on informational interviewing. Um, I will say we have recordings for almost all of those. Um, as you know, a lot of these sessions, we have an interactive component. So obviously, you don't get all of that experience if you're just watching the video. But um, please feel free to check out the videos. Um, if someone from our team doesn't mind putting in at some point um, a link for for those other the the folder the playlist um, for those other videos that would be that'd be awesome. So okay, um, let's start using some of this to think about where we're heading today. So first off, if you attended the session that Byungho did on informational interviewing, um, you know he was really trying to get people to think about. If you're not familiar with the term of informational interview, it's a, another it's a it's a way to do networking, right? It's it's having a conversation with people who are doing the things that you want to do, working in the the roles, working at the employers that you want to work in, and hearing from their experience and learning about that. Um, so he did a lot of great ideas on how you can put that to use and, and ways that you can go about that. Um, so this was a cool way of kind of thinking how you can use networking um, and, and progress. Um, you don't want to just start out with networking with the, you know, the, if you can find them, you know, someone in the C-suite at the dream company that you mentioned in our, in our icebreaker. Like you want to find people where you can start networking, get better at it, get comfortable asking the right questions, figure out how to make the most of the conversations um, and just yeah with more reps um, you'll get you'll get more and more successful so today we're talking a little bit about um, target employers building a list of employers you're interested in um, and outreach i will say i think another way that we could word this is like basically having a strategy for what you're doing in a job search or internship search um, we've kind of been giving you bits and pieces and i think this session is really cool because it starts to bring a lot of the different pieces together um, and so, yeah, um, uh, get ahead of myself, but, um, uh, as you can tell, I think this is, this is pretty, pretty significant stuff. So, um, if you joined us in some of the past sessions, or especially, I know some of you through, um, the, either the MSF career curriculum, or, um, for some of the rest of you, if you're digging in around on the, the resource library in 1220, you may have already encountered this or be thinking about this. We talked about this in the career exploration session, but this idea of, uh, FIG, um, so this is a sample template. This is one way to think about this, but thinking about your job search in terms of, you know, what's the functions, job functions you want to pursue, what are the industries you want to pursue, and what are the locations, the geographic locations you want to pursue this. I've seen a, a cool version of this. Um, someone did a presentation also thinking about like impact, which I think is a cool way to think of like what's the value or what's the what's the change you want to you want to make in the world. So they were thinking like figgy figi with i for impact um but this i think is a cool way to start thinking about and structuring like hey how am i going to go about this how am i going to structure my search what are my what are my target points um so this kind of gets into that you know taking that dream job and putting a little bit of structure to it and i also think i mean it's important to have we'll talk more about this but to have more than just one plan right so this gives you some some options okay so what we're going to do is um, in, I'm going to explain to you, we're going to start out with kind of a little bit of an activity here, something that we can just all do um, while we're while we're on this Zoom. And that's we're going to spend a couple of minutes um, in a moment thinking about some dream companies. OK, um, and, and beyond dream companies, what are some employers you're really interested in? So uh, this is kind of taking it a step in from our icebreaker and actually thinking about something that we're going to kind of work with and do some activities with um, through the rest of this session. And hopefully we're going to kind of like give you, give you the tip of the iceberg and then you're going to keep working on this um, beyond today. So here's what we're going to do in just a moment. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna mute and it'll be kind of quiet. If anybody has questions, they can put them in the chat box on this. But this is pretty simple. Um, and we'll tell you where we're going with this in a bit. But um, if you would go ahead and um, if you're in a place where you can pull up an Excel document or a Word document, or if you've just got, you know, you, you're a pencil and paper person and that just helps you for more of the brainstorming stage, get that out. You know, if you're, um, you know, have your phone pulled up and you have notes that you like to use or a note app that you like to use, 
basically whatever however you want to put it down but please put it down don't just don't just have it in your head it's got to be down somewhere that you can look at it um you're going to start creating a list of employers and when we say go you're going to try to think of basically as many employers as, as you can employers that you're interested in that you may want to work with that you want to learn more about um there's no commitment to this like um this is just trying to get some things down so and and i'd say we're going to start on two things hopefully in five minutes if you can if you can just start coming up with employers off the top of your head or thinking back about um you know places that family friends alumni people you've talked with in the past people you you know in companies you want to been be thinking about if you can just come over the top of your head awesome if you get stuck on that um you can start doing a little bit more on maybe step number two of like thinking about alumni you know if there are any alumni from your school that you know of um where are they working or where, I mean, that could be from your undergraduate institution, that could be from, you know, Vanderbilt, could be from, you know, Owen or data science, um, but that could be another place to look. So, yeah, so if you would get, get however you want to put this down, and if you haven't already, start, start brainstorming, start working. Um, more you can put down the, uh, the better, like turn your filters off for brainstorming. You don't want the filters. You just want to try to get as many as, you're, as, you, as you can down. So take the overanalyzing off uh, and, and just start. Writing. Any, any questions before we dig into that, either in the chat box or unmuting yourself, any questions? Okay, awesome. Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to mute. If you have a question, put it in the chat box, but I will see you all back in about uh, five minutes. Thanks.
All right. That was five minutes. Um, so yeah, I hope that everybody gave everyone a chance to at least dig in and, and get started on this. Um, anybody anybody want to share? How, how did that go? Did, was it was it easy or did you come up with more companies than you thought is anybody if anybody wants to put in the chat box like how many companies they um they came in, came up with um from that time um or if anybody wants to put any reactions in the chat um or unmute themselves and share uh how it was or if anything came up while they're doing that I'm, i'd welcome hearing about that nice Sky got about seven down. I'm curious, was did any, for any of you, did it feel harder? Did you feel like, oh, wow, I thought I could come up with more? Or for some of you, was it like, uh, oh, man, I really, um, I really couldn't come up with much? Nathan, you got about 10. OK, nice. For for any of you, did you focus? Rachel Superbowl came up with about 10, 10 as well. Awesome. Did most of you kind of stick with the dream employers? Did any of you kind of start looking um, online or checking alumni employers or or even other categories? Reese, about 15. Nice. Well, I'm I'm glad. I mean, when I did this the the first time, I I remember feeling like, oh man, I think I I came up with a couple, and I was like, oh man, I feel like I thought I'd come up with even more, um, you know. So it's interesting. I think you know we can only hold so much in our minds. Um, lots of other things that we're thinking about, uh, you know, what we're gonna have for lunch and what we need to do next and the deadlines we have and what other you know what emails we need to respond to, what what texts we need to send people, so many other things. So. Um, good just to put it down on paper. So I'm glad that you've got that. Hopefully what we're going to do now is give you some more tools to how you can take that list. You can build on it and how you can use it. So um, basically what we're doing is we're kind of starting um, building an employer list. Um, one of the resources that we'll talk about is um, there's a book that we're going to refer from this. It's called the two-hour job search. There we go. Um, and backwards. Um, so we'll you'll see more about that in a moment. But this is an activity that comes from the to our job search approach, um, and it's creating an employer lamp list or or a list of employer targets. So um, what what I'm saying lamp? What does that stand for? It stands for a list list of employers. Um, then looking if those employers, if there's alumni contacts, how motivated you are to pursue those employers, and if and if they have a posting. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, kind of break this out a little bit, sort of step by step. Um, but again, this is this is a process um, that I think would be really helpful with this. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. And I'm hoping that those of you who are tuning in can use some of this and take some of this and pursue next steps. And we'll send some more resources and tools on this afterwards um, if it helps. So I would say one of the things I really encourage you to do is, um, if you would, to make the most of this session, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're attending. Please set aside some time. I'd recommend at least 35 minutes to go ahead and create an employer list based on some of the tools that we're sharing. Um, so if, if you can do that, I think that will be super helpful. Um, so if you've got your list of employers, maybe at the bottom of this, you know, schedule 35 more minutes at least and 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 do more on this list, kind of finish this exercise. So um, we have some sample um, documents that you can use for this. Um, and I can share, we can share more about this later, but there's a place in 1220 that you can find uh, a sample document, this, um, an Excel document. So this can look a lot of different ways. This is one that kind of, you can see the top, there's a outline sort of the function industry geography impact. Um, so that fig part, and then also it's basically a structure for your lamp list. So if it's of help, you've got um, a spreadsheet there that you can use in that, and we'll be sharing that more in our follow-up. So after you've, so the lamp list, right? There's the, the four steps, creating the list of employers. The next is starting to think about if there are alumni contacts at those employers. And I'll say, you know, you, know, you may ask, Brooke, why are you doing this? 
Um, this kind of gets into the next steps of how you're going to use this list, but it's also sort of a proxy for do you or do you have some easier ways, some warmer ways to build a connection into that company that you're thinking about? Um, there's different ways you can approach this. And when I say alumni, of course, that can mean your undergraduate institution. Um, it could mean um, could mean Vanderbilt. It could mean um, Owen or Data Science Institute. So there's a couple of different ways that you can think about that. Um, but what we encourage you to do, like when I've done this before, um, if you haven't used the alumni LinkedIn uh, function, it's a quick and pretty easy way to do this. So I'd encourage you to use something like that and see if there are alumni at some of these places. If you haven't used the alumni function, if you look up any school uh, in LinkedIn, uh, and you head to the, you can kind of see the the uh, bar at the top of uh, the screenshot there and you head to alumni and you'll start getting this tool. And there's a lot of things you can do on this tool if you haven't seen it before. Um, I know Bianca was talking a little bit about this, not just where are people, what employers are they working at? You can see, you know, what they did, what they studied. Um, you can see the arrow on the right. You just kind of keep scrolling on that and you can getting more. And it gives you these sort of mini profiles about people and you can click through to those and see more if you if you'd like. So it's a great, a great easy tool for, for that. Um, if you have any questions on the LinkedIn alumni tool, feel free to um, hop in and let us know either in the chat box or unmuting yourself. So next, next part in the LAMP list is um, assessing your motivation, thinking about how motivated you are in this. And, and again, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about how you can use this in a little bit, but basically it's thinking about, you know, you may come up with some company and you're like, I don't know why I put that on the list. Like, it's not a place I'm interested in. It's not a place I want to pursue. Okay, great. But there may be others on there. You're like, oh, you know, I don't know about that company. Maybe I just need to spend a little more time researching about them. And you may have others. You're like, oh, I've always wanted to work at that company. It sounds great. But just thinking about that, spending a little time thinking about that. And then finally, uh, the fourth part of the, the LAMP list is postings, P for, for, for job postings. And, and this is kind of a quick way just to get a sense of like, what's hiring going on right now for that company? So um, you can do this in different ways, but a quick rubric is right there. Um, you know, you can give them three points if they have postings and they're postings for roles that you're interested in, uh, two if it's postings, but they're not relevant or one point or no points if there are no postings at, at present. So um, that's a little bit of a way to organize that. So hopefully if you do this, if you spend, like I said, roughly like 30, 35 more minutes doing this, um, hopefully, oh, and before I do that, I should mention there's lots of great tools for building a company list. Like we've talked about just a couple Um you hopefully remember in uh, some of our previous sessions, we talked about how you all have access on the um, 1220 um, employer um, resource library to pull a ton of past data on where students have gone. Um, so this can be super helpful and a great way to build out your employer list if you want. There's also awesome resources through the Walker Management Library. They have a whole database, um, Hoover's, that has a building a company list section. Um, we'll, we'll put resources on, uh, on this. Um, We'll, we'll, all, we'll be sharing some of these in a little bit um, and in the follow-up email. But that to say, there's lots of great emails if you're having a hard time building your, your employer list. But when you build your employer list, hopefully you'll have something like this. Um, it is encouraged that if you do this, you try to get close to 40 employers. Um, so thinking about one employer a minute, and, and a lot of you, you know, were at five or even closer to 10. So you've already made good use of the time that you had, but hopefully you can spend that remaining time and try to get close to 40. And then what we suggest doing is, is you sort that, you organize that, you prioritize that. Um, and you can do that in a lot of different ways. Um, the suggestion is that you kind of start with motivation um, knowing the, the places that you're most interested in and then use functions like the posting or the alumni to kind of get a sense of where you want to focus. So um, so again, this I love this because this kind of puts a strategy to the search. But when we've done this before, I think a very legitimate question is, hey, is it worth focusing on just one or two employers? Like, hey, I've got a dream employer. I should, I remember one student I talked with being like, I mean, why do I want to spend my time on other employers? I just want to focus on that one dream company. Um, and Zeke, you said that you had uh, an anecdote or a story you could share about that if you don't Yeah, mind. I've got lots of stories. Um, so when I finished undergrad way back in 2006, I moved to San Francisco. Um, had the intention of going into tech. Knew I wanted to be in the HR, HR space. Um, was having a difficult time. I started looking at some smaller staffing firms to get some experience recruiting in tech, um, was even having trouble with that. It's a political science major. Um, so I, I was having a tough time. 
I ended up getting a temporary role though at Stanford University. And just having Stanford on my resume, suddenly I started getting a couple of callbacks from Yahoo and Google. And so for me, that was a quick realization that, you know, you can go to a place and it can be a stepping stone, um, but if it's still a good brand, if you're still gonna get, you know, great experience, um, it can be so useful. And so for me, I think having that temporary role at Stanford open up the doors for me because I didn't know anyone at a lot of these companies. I didn't have the network. Um, and so I had to figure out a different way. And so it made me realize like, you know, I can go somewhere where maybe I didn't expect to be, um, but it's going to get me where I want to be. That's awesome. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, it's, I mean, with the exercise, the dream employer, sometimes it takes a couple of steps to get to that, that dream employer. And I think that's a, that's a good thing to, to remember. Um, that's awesome. Thank you for, for sharing that, that Zeke. Um, so, um, maybe before I hop into this, I've got one quick poll that we're going to run. Um, I'm just, I'm curious. Um, we had, we did the exercise at the beginning in the, the icebreaker about your dream company. And I put some, uh, list of, of companies out there. Um, these are companies that I think a lot of you are aware of. Um, like when I think of, you know, I mean, you can kind of tell we've got top consulting firms, top banks, uh, top tech companies. So I'm just curious, I'm curious if, if you don't mind sharing, if you had any of these on your, your, you know, your icebreaker, uh, your dream list, or, you know, or if even if you had them on your, um, lamp list, um, if you want to share that you had those. So, um, awesome. Uh, we've got seven folks so far. I know some people may not have um, had one of those, but just wanted to want to call that out. All right. So here is um, what we found from that. Um, had people had a lot of those picked, um, some being BCG McKenzie, um, certainly some the the Fang or the new version of of Fang with the tech companies, and then some of the very the very top um, well known investment banks. So, um, I mean, I will say, um, I one of the things I want to do is I want to go back and I'm curious to see what the data is on how many students from MSF and Mark Data Science and or our MBA program have landed at some of these firms. I, 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 and I'm not saying this to, to, you know, break hopes and dreams. I'd say overall, it's a, it's probably a pretty small percentage. Like it's, I would, I would estimate that it is under 10% of students who land at these places, it, at least for an internship while they're at Vanderbilt in these programs or right after, immediately after. But I imagine if you'd think like how many of them, it may take a few steps to get to those. I would imagine that it would very quickly, you know, the numbers would, would very quickly increase from there. So just uh, just something to keep to keep thinking about. Um, all right. So I mentioned this uh, to our job search. That's the book I was holding up earlier that was hard to see. Um, it's a great resource on this. The Actually, the author of this book, he's going to be coming on campus and he's going to be doing some presentations and he's going to present on the tour job search, talking a bit more about some of these things and kind of creating a strategy for your job search. And I think he's coming in January. Um, so more to follow on that, but hopefully that helps. All right. Oh. And Zeke, I will turn it over to you because we're talking about yeah. jobs and strategy, and sometimes you hit in into things, situations like these. Yeah. Um, and for those of you that I, I haven't met before, and I didn't do a good job in my intro saying that I was a corporate recruiter before I was in higher education. So I worked for about 10 years in tech and healthcare. And so I wanted to share some of my um, perspective and experience uh, during this session. Uh, and hopefully it's it's helpful for you as you start to target your companies, do that reach out and actually start to, uh, to talk to people this fall. Um, so what if an employer is not posting positions that you wanna pursue? What if the employer doesn't come to Vanderbilt? Or what if you know that there's a hiring freeze um, or the company just is not hiring right now? I think there's still a couple of things that you can do and we can go to the next slide. So this is from my own personal experience and my colleagues in the industries that were good at their craft and their profession, a good recruiter never stops recruiting. Um, and this is kind of the buckets that a recruiter will actually use to prioritize their work, depending on what's going on with their hiring teams and the company. 
First, they have active positions or they're actively recruiting. So these are open positions that they have that they need to fill within a certain timeline. Next, uh, sometimes some of those active positions don't have enough candidates. And so they need to passively search for talent. And so maybe they're looking for the purple squirrel, the unicorn, they have a tough hiring manager who has all these qualifications that are just hard to find. So a recruiter will go out to usually LinkedIn or other um, kind of places to find very niche candidates like people in engineering, for example. Um, they'll go and they'll try to find people who are employed and try to poach them. Um, that's one other tactic that recruiters like to use <laughs> to fill their positions. And then the last one, and where I think, um, you know, if an employer is not hiring, this is really important, is recruiters do a lot of pipeline building. If things are a little bit slow, um, you know, if they're strategic, they're going to do pipeline building. And what that means is they're going to find candidates for positions maybe that they've seen open in the past, or if they anticipate working with their HR business partner and their hiring team, and they know that there's going to be some structural changes to the organization, but it's not going to happen for three months, a proactive and good recruiter is going to start looking for people early. Um, so all that to say is if a company is not looks like they're not hiring, if you can find a recruiter, their job is to talk to people, to develop business, if you will. Um, so they're, they're a great person to talk to at any potential company, especially if you see that they are, say, the finance recruiter or the marketing recruiter. Um, those are just going to be great individuals to try to connect with, and they more than likely will be willing to connect with you as long as you're you're gracious and um, you know thoughtful in your approach and how you connect with them. Next slide. Um, here's the other thing that I know I took advantage of when I was a student. So I was at Peabody at Vanderbilt School of Education um, just a, a little over a year ago. I graduated in 2022. Um, I saw some companies that we're not hiring, but I knew, you know what, I can leverage my student status and just come into these conversations to learn. And I think Bianco did a really good job last week kind of emphasizing that it's about building rapport, it's about building the relationship. Um, with recruiters in particular, again, they're salespeople, they wanna develop business, um, they wanna get to know you, they wanna have a pipeline of candidates for future roles so they're not being reactive. Um, as we've been talking about, if you have something in common with the person, like they're an alumni from your undergraduate program, there may be a former colleague, if you've already had some work experience, um, those are great people to connect with at, at a company. And I know Bianca also mentioned like a slew of other commonalities that you can look at um, to try to connect with folks at companies, even if they're not hiring, just go in and, and learn about the person and build that relationship. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that slide. So we can go to the next slide. All right, so I know we had um, an assignment from last session, and I'm curious if, uh, if anyone was able to do any of that reach out and kind of how far you, you got in that process, if you were able to start. Um, so here you'll see how far did you get with your informational interview outreach. Um, so go ahead and take a moment to answer that poll. All right, I'll give it like five more seconds. All right, so it looks like, um, oh, got a few more responses. It looks like a few of you have sent an outreach message. Um, one of you had an informational interview, which is outstanding. Um, if, is that person willing to share like what, what they got out of that conversation? Yeah, I had a, a informational interview. It was actually for an internship for an agency out of Nashville. And so I connected with a former M Mark who just did the internship last year. And so she was able to tell me about the position and what she learned from it and what her experience is like and what she would change about it. So it was it was really helpful and she was really willing to help, which I appreciated. <laughs> That's awesome. Did it feel easy for you, Rachel, to, to send that reach out 
Definitely, especially student to student being just in the program that was that made it more comfortable and a little easier and she was like just fresh out of the program so she was excited to help and give back which was really helpful. That's wonderful. Um, so those of you that have an outreach message but haven't been able to send it yet anything holding you back or is it just I just need to get to it. You can put it in the chat. All right, so for those that have sent an outreach message but haven't received a response, oh, Sky, <laughs> it's okay. We, we all maybe will get rejected. It's part, of, it's part of life, but you never know until you try, right? Um, and so that kind of takes us to these folks that have sent out an outreach message, haven't heard back yet. Has anyone actually followed up? You can put in the chat if, if you followed up um, or if you've only sent the original message. Well, if you haven't followed up yet, you know, if it's been about a week or so since you've sent it, go ahead and follow up. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I know if it's a LinkedIn request, you might not be able to necessarily do that, but kind of keep it on your radar to follow up when, whenever you're able to. See, can I pop in here for a second? Yeah. Um, Sky, if you're scared of rejection, I can tell you a funny story. I once tried to network with somebody um, that was a really bad at a company I wanted to work at, and they said that they were so busy, I can. So I networked with other people. I reached out to other people at the company, and one of them was a manager and had a great conversation. And she actually said, did you connect with this person that recently graduated? And the next day, I get an email from that person that's like, hey, um, I actually have some time. So, you know, in, even with the mission, so rejection, there's always other ways that you can still talk to people. And so I wouldn't be scared um, because there's sometimes you might just need to find out of it. That's, That's a great story. Thanks for sharing. That is, thank you for sharing. That. I'll, so I'll add one more thing on, on that too is, um, is, I mean, a lot of times when I've heard people kind of like, oh, I'm really thoughtful of reaching out to somebody, I, I've kind of turned the question around and it's like, hey, Imagine this, you know, um, imagine somebody is, is going to reach out to you from um, the school that you just attended, you know, your undergraduate institution, uh, they, they're going to reach out to you, would you would you be open to talking to them. Um, and a lot of times when I say they'd be like, Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, I graduated from my undergraduate institution years ago, and I would be more than glad if someone reached out to me and be like, Hey, yeah, I, I'm glad to tell you about my experience, even though it was a long time ago. Like, yeah. And so I think, I think if you flip it around, a lot of people are like, Oh yeah, that's, that's doable. I'd be willing to help other people. And I think likewise, a lot of people are willing to, to be of help to you. Yeah. Especially when you're a student, I feel like people, most people have maybe gone through either undergrad or graduate program at some of the companies that you're looking at. And so they're going to like go back and remember like, oh yeah, I, I had to do some of this reach out. I had a network too. I, I want to give back. I know kind of the place that you were in. People, people remember that. All right, next slide. So um, I want to dig a little bit deeper into when you actually do reach out, you are starting to connect with someone, whether it be for networking or you have an interview coming up. I thought it might be helpful to kind of define who are the folks or individuals that you might meet. And so I, we have them in these four buckets of an HR person or a recruiter, an alumni, hiring manager, or other employees. Um, and then what's under each of these titles is essentially um, what the person either it might be responsible for or kind of what their sphere of influence might be. And so for their HR and recruiting, they know the recruiting and application process. If you are actively interviewing for a role, they're going to be your main point of contact. So when you have questions, like they are your go-to. Um, they're also the employment brand ambassador, um, so they're going to know a, a lot at a very high level of, about the company, um, and so utilize them. They they are there. They want to make sure you have a good experience as a candidate. Um, alumni are going to be influencers. They could be on the hiring team for the role that you're looking at or that you might be interested in, or they might be on a cross-functional team that works with you know the role or internship that you're interested in. Hiring managers are typically 
one of the key decision makers because you're likely going to be reporting to them. Um, they have key knowledge of the role that you're possibly interviewing for. And then they tend to be mid to more senior level. So they're really going to understand a lot of the dynamics of the organization um, and of the position and team that you're looking at. Other employees will also be influencers. They also could be part of the hiring team. Um, they could be part of a cross-functional team. And so I think you'll start to see as you go through interview processes, um, you're going to interview with more than just the team that you'll be working with directly. You might be working or interviewing with, as a marketer, you might interview with a couple of people from finance. You might interview with a couple of people from HR. Um, you just have to keep in mind, like anyone that you're talking to could be in the interview. Um, and other employees, it's also important to keep in mind, they could also be senior leaders um, that could open up doors for you. Next slide. So I wanted to break down kind of the realistic goals that you should have for these conversations. And so for the, when you talk to someone in HR or a recruiter, you wanna understand or get, take away from that conversation. What is the process like? What is the timeline? Um, they are usually the first screen. And so you also wanna be able to showcase your quali qualifications and skills for the role. Um, and if they're not hiring, you know, you, you want to showcase your qualifications for maybe future potential roles. So you want to have a really good relationship with that HR person or recruiter. For alumni, um, probably pretty self-explanatory. You want to gain insights into the company and the culture, um, obviously their, their role. And I think with alumni too, you have an opportunity to get advice on how to effectively position yourself to possibly work at that company or break into the industry um, because they did it themselves. They went through your same you know, undergraduate or graduate program. So I think that's a that should be a key goal of when speaking to an alum. Um, for the hiring manager, you're gonna wanna understand key responsibilities of the position um, and expectations of the role. If you are actively interviewing, obviously you're gonna wanna demonstrate your, your skill set and your qualifications. Um, it's also important to express genuine and authentic interest in the role. And, and the questions will help with that. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, you also want to understand team dynamics um, and how this role operates within the, the broader team and, and how the team operates within the broader organization. Um, with others that you may be talking about um, or talking to, you want to have a good understanding of the company's culture from their perspective. Um, it's a great way to learn about career paths. I think as you all grow in your careers, you're going to start to realize like some people went from HR into finance, and maybe they use like an MBA program or a specialized master's program to do that. And so I think as you network with other people who do not have linear paths, because let's be real, like none of us do, um, it's really interesting just to hear how people got from point A to point B to point C. Um, and so these other folks um, that you'll be talking to, I think that's uh, a great takeaway from some of those conversations. Um, and then for those folks, advice on how to break into a particular industry or company is, is also fair game and, and something you should pursue. All right, so what to ask to, to actually get to those goals? What, what types of questions should you be asking? Um, so for the HR recruiter person, any like concerns or questions on the application, the recruiting process, how many rounds of interviews do I have? You know, how many people are in each interview? Am I gonna be talking to a panel of three people? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Like ask those questions. They know all of that information. Um, they should also know timeline. So ask them about the timeline. Is it gonna take, you know, six weeks to get through this process, one month? Um, what might the turnaround be on an offer if you get to an offer stage? Uh, they're gonna know all of that information. They also, again, will know high level um, things about the company. So ask them about that. They're, they're an employment uh, ambassador or a brand ambassador for the employer. So alumni, you wanna ask about their role, what they're currently working on. Um, if you have more specific questions about the company, so perhaps they're in, in finance and you wanna know like, how does the finance team innovate in the company? Like, what are you doing there to you know, create efficiencies create impact, create change. Those are types of questions that you should be asking an alum or someone else working at the firm versus say the recruiter. Um, and again, asking advice on how you should approach the job search, 
you know, if you are actively interviewing, um, you can ask the alum, like, tell me about your case interview. Can you give me any insight on, on how that was for you? Um, or if you know that they broke into the industry, ask them how they did that. Questions for a hiring manager, I think should be very strategic and targeted. Um, you're gonna wanna ask questions about the team structure, um, how they collaborate with other departments, any KPIs or key goals that the team has. Uh, role specific questions, this is a big one. How's performance measured? How are you gonna know if you're going to do well in this job? I think it's a great question to ask in the interview process. I also like to ask about challenges. I wanna know what I'm getting myself into, right? <laughs> um, because if it sounds like it's too crazy, too much, maybe you might wanna rethink if that's the right role for you. Um, and then you can also uh, ask about tools being utilized um, to make sure that you have a good understanding of those tools or if they're tools that you can actually learn while on the job. Um, there's strategic questions that you can ask. Um, and so I think these are great questions to, to see how a hiring manager thinks about their team and how it fits into the broader organization. Um, and then for other, other folks, it's kind of similar to alumni, ask about their roles, ask about what they're working on, um, any opportunities and challenges that they face from where they sit in the organization. And again, just how to break into the industry, um, how they approach their job search. Uh, those are all fair questions. And, and I'll say on this too, like I really think, um, I, I mean, I think from what I've seen, people who are most successful in recruiting are able to kind of put themselves in the shoes of the employer and think, you know, what is what is the problem the employer is trying to solve with this? What are they really looking for in these candidates? And um, so it's it's so important to understand that. And I think this is awesome too, because uh, like to flip this around, sometimes we get people asking like, oh, like, are there any things you really shouldn't do in networking? Um, and I think, I mean, if you're spending good time, once you have informational interview set up, thinking about how to, what questions you want to ask for those conversations, that's a key part of it. I mean, for example, if you go to a hiring manager, had one student do this, much a hiring manager be like, oh, could you tell me about like the hiring process? Like, how did you, how did you, you know, get hired? And the hiring manager was like, well, I've been here for a while, like 20, 30 years. So it was a paper and pencil process when I did it. Like I did not apply online. Like hiring manager is probably not the best person to ask those kinds of questions to. That'd be a better question for a recruiter or a younger alum. So I think if you're thinking about these things, it's going to really make sure you're, you're, you know, making the most of those conversations. Um. So as far as like wrapping up these conversations, especially if it's an informational interview, and so we're just trying to reinforce a lot of these points and building from uh, the last session is, you know, thank them for their time, um, for their willingness to share information. I think it's a good practice to share any key takeaways or if there's something that really stood out to you, like share that at the end of the conversation. Um, ask to keep in touch, especially right now. Again, you're a student. Ask if you can keep in touch because you're going to be going to a case competition. You might be participating in brand week. You want to share like what happens from those events or those experiences. I can almost say no one's going to tell you no. You can't keep in touch with me um, as long as it's obviously a, a good conversation. Um, and then if it feels appropriate, ask for a referral or ask to be connected to another person. And as a former recruiter, I loved getting referrals from someone who, in, in my company that networked with someone and they, they would send me, not always their resume, but they would just send me um, their name, maybe their LinkedIn profile or introduce me via email and be like, hey Zeke, I, I talked with you know so-and-so um, about my experience. They have an interesting background. Could you reach out to them? And you know, if you have an open role, reach out to them, let me know what you think. Um, that was so, so valuable. And so sometimes it's just, hey, can you connect me with HR or the recruiter just to learn more about kind of what might be open or the application process? That's a good way to kind of approach that. Um, and, and another thing is, is there anyone else you think I should talk to? So they might, I think, you know, Young Ho's example kind of showed that, you know, you can find loopholes and ways to, to get to a person through other people. And so, um, I've been talking to alumni recently and I keep asking them, is there another person you think I should talk to from your class um, that would be beneficial for me as I start my role here at Owen? And everyone's been giving me names, so it's been great. All right, I see a question in the chat. What's a good way to bring myself back onto someone's ra radar? I connected and then didn't follow up properly, but would still like to have the, the connection. 
Um, I think one thing that I would say, and anyone else can jump in from the team, is that um, I personally would reach out with some tidbit of information based on that first initial conversation that you had with them, or if you were going to follow up with something at some point, like you can share that, you know, life got a little busy, you just want to check in. People appreciate honesty and authenticity, um, but if there's something that you can share that might be valuable to the person, something that you read, um, you know, any news type of article, I think that's a, a great way to kind of open that up and get the conversation started again. And I'll, and I'll say that question is awesome, too, because it's kind of anticipating where we're going to, to wrap up with things, which is, um, I mean, thank you notes and kind of staying in touch with people. Um, so, yes, I mean, after you have a conversation with someone, you can send a thank you note like this. This is actually sort of a thank you note sent probably a little bit after, you know, so like, hey, you know, we had this class and something came up and it made me think about something that we talked about, which I think that can be a great way to kind of tag someone and, and keep the conversation going. Um, so that's a great way to do it. Even just like, you know, you know, just like Byung-Ho's example, like, hey, I've been in touch with some other people in the organization, you know, just, you can just send that to somebody like, hey, you know, glad we had a chance to talk, or I know you're busy, maybe we'll get a chance to talk, here's some other people I've been talking to, and maybe that person will respond and be like, oh, hey, you know, it's better now, I've got some more time now. Um, so thinking about how to keep that connection warm, and you know, some connections you want to keep warm, uh, so, some you won't, um, and that's um, you know that's something we're glad to kind of work with you on and keep thinking about. Um, I mean, as you can tell, um, I think having a process for these things is, is so valuable and so important. Important um, here, if it helps, this is just a quick look at. Um, this was uh, a past student who had a contact sheet, and this was the contact sheet that they used, and so. Um, this is, you know, similar to the, the LAMP list, the employer list, but you can kind of see here they had the last contact, what's the deadline for applying for that company, any notes, things that they really wanted to remember from that conversation or wanted to bring up with that person. So, um, so yeah, good things to remember there. So, all right, in our final minutes um, or final minute, uh, some next steps. Um, I'm just trying to kind of summarize some, some key takeaways from all of this. Um, you know, don't just you know, there's a, there's, you know, Zeke was talking about active and proactive ways that recruiters work. There's a, there's a, um, a passive way and, and a proactive way to do your job search. So if you're doing something like this, if you're coming up with a process, it's not just like passively waiting and being like, oh, does an employer have a job posting or not? Like it puts, it puts a strategy to that and it, and it can really help you be far more effective and in control of the process. Um, you know, when, when you are reaching out, think about, take that employer perspective, put yourself in their shoes, think about, um, you know, what are the things they're trying to solve for? Um, think about what questions make the most sense to ask. Um, think through those things. Um, so don't just have a process for starting this, have a process for staying in touch with people. And then um, as you can see that last way, um, last point, you know, reaching out is not easy. You know, Sky, I appreciate your honesty in that. It's It can be a tough thing to do, um, but find a way to do it that's authentic to you, that's meaningful to you, but also push yourself. Like, um, I, you know, I think if we all wanted to, we would probably just, you know, sit on the couch and not reach out to other people. So I know it's not always the easiest thing, but it can be so helpful and so beneficial. And hopefully, like the example said, I bet you'd be willing to help other people if they're reaching out to you. Um, and I bet those others are, are willing to do the same. Um, okay, so... Talking about what's coming up, just briefly a few deadlines. Um, we have some resume book deadlines. We already had an early resume book deadline for masters of finance students. And I believe that will be opening up so that other masters of finance students can add later. Um, but uh, next Friday is for the data science students and the Friday after that for MMARC students. So if you haven't already be working on your resume, getting it in the Vanderbilt Owen format uh, and submitting on those resume books, if you have any questions on that or you want us to look at your resumes, um, please feel free to reach out and set up appointments. And then uh, the last thing I'm gonna touch on is um, our upcoming session. So we only have two more sessions left. Um, there is the cover letter writing session that is next Thursday. And then our last one um, for the summer is on the interviews and beyond. Um, as always, there is, I mean, 
this is just part of what's available and there's always more that's on 1220. Um, so, so please be checking the events tab in 1220 because it's such a great way to see, to see what's, what's coming up, um, both from us, occasionally employer events, um, lots of other things on there. Um, Sky, you asked a, a good question about where can you find this? If you're referring to what we had in the last slide about the resume books, um, there is to get into the resume books. If you're in 1220, there's a resume book tab. Um, and so you can click on that tab and there it will be one for your class, whatever class that you're in. And you'll, you know, so data science students, MSDS resume book for the class of 2025, you'll add your resume um, and you'll go from there. Um, yeah, great. Glad if that can help. Well, I know that we are already past 10 o'clock. Um, thank you all for taking time to join us. Um, and we really appreciate that. We look forward to seeing you uh, next Thursday talking about cover letters. I'd encourage you, if you have time, start digging in and working a little bit on your cover letter and come with any questions that you have or start thinking about cover letters or looking at a couple of samples. Um, and then we're going to address that more uh, then. Um, all right. Thank you all. Uh, please take care. If you have any questions, stick around and we'll be, be glad to answer those. But otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, everyone.